This instructional video is designed to introduce the concept of the chemical potential and we'll start by talking about the idea of having two phases in equilibrium and considering the Gibbs energy of that. So the Gibbs energy itself of those two phases sitting there, well you've got the Gibbs for the first one plus the Gibbs for the second one. Now there's a few things to think about. Uh, we can take the differential of this thing. And so if we take a total differential, well, Gibbs is normally a function of temperature and pressure. So we'll need to get those partials first. So we have the partial with respect to pressure times its straight version. But because we have two different phases, the number of things in phase one, well, those moles are also now a variable. And the number of things in phase two, those moles are also a variable. So we have two additional terms. We have the change in the Gibbs based on the change in phase one and a similar partial for the number of moles in phase two. This may look like a lot of terms, but there are a couple things that we can do. Since this is considered a process at equilibrium, the temperature and pressure do not change. So this term then will be zero, and this term will be zero. And now all we're left with at equilibrium is a differential change in the Gibbs energy that's due entirely to changes in the number of moles in both phases. And this kind of makes sense with our basic general chemistry understanding of equilibrium. And that what's really happening is that the number of things in phase one transition to phase two at the same rate as things transition from phase two to phase one. So with those forward and reverse being in equilibrium, one other thing we can do is say that really the change in the Gibbs should be zero. So not only do we have this fact, but since the moles are switching back and forth at an equal rate, whatever the change is from phase one needs to be equal and opposite to whatever the change is for phase two. So at this point, it's possible to take these remaining terms and we can replace either dn1 or dn2 with the other. So as a result, we're going to substitute in for zero here. And I'm going to write the following. That partial with respect to phase one minus the partial with respect to phase two. And since I have the minus here, all I have to do is make a replacement with the appropriate differential. So D in one. Now at this point I have the product of two things being set equal to zero. One of these has to be zero and the other one uh, can be some number. Clearly the number of moles is changing is a non-zero quantity. So this has to be the part that we set equal to zero. So if this part is zero, then the argument becomes that this molar change for phase one has to be equal to the molar change for phase two. And because the idea of changing numbers of moles is such a big idea in chemistry, we actually define a new quantity here, the chemical potential. So the chemical potential then is defined as that change in the Gibbs with respect to the number of moles. And as a result, we have the following, that chemical potential for phase one has to equal chemical potential for phase two when we're sitting at equilibrium. So this development of this concept of chemical potential begins with the idea that if we start with something in equilibrium, well, that phase change occurs at a constant temperature and pressure. The entire change is due to the number of moles. We use some baseline ideas about equilibrium to reach the point where we can argue that these quantities have to be equal to each other. 